Sorry, folks, give me one second. I want to post this deck list below the stream because I'm going to get a lot of questions about it. Oh, I didn't hit save changes. Got to do it again. Womp womp. Okay, that's there. I just need to like uncheck that. And then refresh this. Yeah, there we go. All right. So good morning, folks. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University, and today we're going to be streaming with something a little bit unusual. So Bafra has been streaming a very odd experimental DNT build. Uh, he wrote a, a post on the source about that if you're interested in following up on it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his build and make a couple of changes and then run this through a league. Um, let me start out by saying that I dislike a lot of things about this list even after I've made some changes, but I think it is an interesting route for exploration. So Bahra's general argument was that current DNT is relatively slow for the format, and a lot of times you're making very poor mana exchanges. For example, if you play Stoneforge Mystic for two mana, fetch up a Sword of Fire and Ice, pay two mana to put it in, pay two mana to equip, that's six mana before you've really gotten any true value out of your cards, as in like you've impacted the board in a meaningful way. And the issue is that someone can just go, all right, lightning bolt in response to equip and set you back on a ton of tempo. So his approach to DNT that he's currently trying out is what if we cut a lot of the cards that result in those tempo losses? So he cut four Stoneforge Mystic and three pieces of equipment, freeing up seven slots. Then he said, well, Swords of Plowshares is really bad against game in game one against a lot of decks, right? So what if we just pull that? So his build is four Aether Vials, 23 lands, and then 33 creatures. So this is about the best like Aether Vial iteration you could build, right? Like in comparison to a, like a normal DNT deck, you're gonna have about 26 creatures, you know, plus or minus one or two, depending on what exactly you're doing. So I'm going to talk about what his build started with and some small changes I've made. Uh, so his build is main deck, what I have here, with the exception that these two selfless spirits were Sarah Avengers. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, the build generically, and then I'll talk about why I made this change. So he's not overly hot on Phyrexian Revoker right now. And he's essentially replaced the, some of the Stoneforge slash Phyrexian Revoker slots with Spirit of the Labyrinth. I hate this card, I think it's garbage, I'll yell at it a lot today. He's playing Direfully Daredevil, which is kind of like an honorary 3-drop, since you really need another mana in order to go and do something with it. And then at the 3-drop uh, slot, we have some of the usual red-white stuff, in that like we have the Magus of the Moon, uh, but... Uh, there are two weird things. Number one is Thalia Heretic Cathar. Uh, again, a card that I don't necessarily love, but he said it was really important for like the sneak and show matchup, which he made much, much worse by removing Phyrexian Revoker. And then there's a Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Of all of the stuff that's in the deck, this is like the, the piece of experimentation I like the most. So right now there's almost no Swords of Plowshares in the format. Like, you see it in DNT and Miracles, but otherwise we're on, like, 
Fatal Push, Abrupt Decay, Lightning Bolt, Culligan's Command, sort of removal right now. So this card says, 3-2 uh, Vigilance, when it dies, create X-1-1 one, one White Spirit Creature Tokens with Flying, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So if you go and have a long, grindy game with something like Check Pile, and then you drop a Hollowed Spirit Keeper and it dies, the value you get off of that is absolutely insane. So I like this. I like this. Uh, this is a card that I would try out in like regular DNT or regular red white DNT. All right, uh, let's talk talk about a change I made in the main deck. So his build had four Sarah Avengers, which conceptually I like. But let's look at the two drop slot. Direfleet Daredevil doesn't count, right? Like this is an honorary three drop. You don't just play this out as a two one first strike in the vast majority of cases. Sarah Avenger is like an honorary 4-drop, or like honorary 3-drop, like turn 3 play off a of vial. If I, I play his build as is, I only have 8 turn 2 plays. That's, that's not good, right? That means that if I don't have like a Rashadden port to just like port down their land, or I don't have an Aether Vial, I have like almost no turn 2 plays. So I think I just want to like play a couple of selfless spirits in order to go and protect the other valuable cards. Like there are a lot of just like absolutely backbreaking cards here that like can really take over games. But I just want a couple more things that I can just play. Uh, this does increase the like X1 weakness of the deck. Uh, but like one of the things Bavra said in building this was like, it's going to lose to negative one, negative one hate, but there's not a lot of that right now, so it's probably safe to try out. Uh, going to the sideboard, I made a few changes. I'm going to go ahead and like pull the changes I made over to the third column here. So, Bahra's original build had these cards in the sideboard. Oh, wait, no. Not that either. And I made a few changes. I'm off somewhere. There's supposed to be a mind break trap in here. Sorry, I was kind of crunched for time and getting this together. I've been starting before now and when I said I'd start. Okay, so Bahra's original build sideboard was mostly the same. I think I changed these three cards and everything else is the same. Uh, he had a Cunning Spark Mage, where I have the third path. Um, I've had very negative play experiences with Cunning Spark Mage. Uh, I just don't find that it's particularly consistent. And since we have, like, no Swords to Plowshares, I really just want more removal cards. I don't know if, like, third path to Exile is better than, like, first Swords to Plowshares. But since he was trying out path, I'm going to, uh, to keep doing that. Um... He had a Wiltleaf Liege, where I have a Recruiter of the Guard. Uh, Wiltleaf Liege is something that can help with like the negative one, negative one side of the deck. Um, but I watched him play a few games with it, and it, and it was it seemed kind of awkward. It's a little hard to cast, especially if your opponent is like randomly a wasteland deck. Um, I'm not I'm not sold on that. And since we're like a 4 Thalia, 4 Wingmare build, we don't necessarily want to go and play something like Cataclysm or Gideon because it can be really hard to cast. Uh, so I'm just going to play a Recruiter that can get me more copies of like whatever matters in the matchup, whether that's like Hollowed Spirit Keeper or Dire Fleet Daredevil or one of the Hate Bears. And then he has a third Surgical Extraction where I'm just going to play a Rest in Peace. Uh, surgical Extraction is like $40 on Magic Online. So I don't just want to, like, drop the money on it unless I think that it's actually good. And I think Rest in Peace is such a powerful card that removing a little bit of your utility in order to just cripple your opponents is fine in the matchup where you really, really want Rest in Peace. And by that I mean I'm, I'm talking about matchups like Dredge and Reanimator where a resolved Rest in Peace is just game winning and, and they just simply can't beat it. This is not a deck where you just board in Rest in Peace randomly against decks that have incidental graveyard value in the forms of things like Snapcaster Mage and Deathrite Shaman. Um, so I think it's okay to still play a Rest in Peace 
and then have some more variety in your graveyard hate. So this gives us a little bit more balanced graveyard hate package, even though it's not great with the Dire Fleet Daredevils and the Hollow Spirit Keepers. Yeah, the Flying Drew, this, this build is weird. It is uh, inspired by Bahra. Uh, if you're interested in uh, everything about it, uh, someone just linked a, a post in the chat that talks about it from the source, or later you can take a look at the, uh, the beginning of the video. Uh, once I get some more people, I'm, I'm happy to like talk about some of the quirks of the deck list again, uh, but I think I just want to get going here and start playing some games. Uh, so, like, you know, after, like, round one or round two or something, you know, when I'm up to a reasonable number of viewers, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, like, briefly recapping again, but I don't want to do it, like, right after I started here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this window and jump directly into it. So I think Bahra has like consistently gone four one with this deck list, uh, which is which is promising. Like that's that's where you want to be. Um, he hasn't managed the five zero yet. If I don't like this deck list, I probably won't play it again. Um, but if it seems like it has promise, I might test it a little bit. I wanted to like play at least one league to see like what I thought of the the general overall feel of it. I'm really skeptical. I think removing the, uh, the Stoneforge Mystic package really hurts some matchups. Like, not having that life gain versus Delver is huge. Not having the, uh, the Jitte versus decks like Elves uh, and DNT can be really big. Uh, so I'm, I'm skeptical. But it has other angles of attack that are really going to improve other matchups. So. Uh, this is probably going to be a keep no matter what my opponent is playing. Looks like my opponent plays some sort of bug mid-range deck. Sorry, I'm just getting my spreadsheet pulled up now for data. <coughs> yeah, this is this is testing for the sake of testing an interesting idea. This is not necessarily testing a build that I think is like super amazing or anything like that. It is a build that I think is interesting and I have a lot of respect for Bahra as a player and deck builder. So I just want to like give it a go. Well, fine. What the fuck is wrong with you, opponent? This is my job. This is what I do.
Poop indeed. I'm gonna go ahead and take this hit. There's some merit in like using the mom to block and like hoping that they have an abrupt decay and that they use their turn to play that abrupt decay rather than another threat. Or him. It's okay, the only card I care about in my hand is like Thalia, really. Oh, so it's good I've got another one of those, I guess. We'll probably just get like Liliana sacrificed here and then never get back in this game. Nope. I am absolutely not willing to take five here. No, I, I think my opponent is playing, like, Sharkless Bug. We're not playing around the fourth wasteland. Let the record show. Well, this game's just gone poorly on every axis. Kinda wanna just jump block to protect my life total, since my board is just so bad. This also lets me, like, use a one drop from my opponent's graveyard if I draw a colored mana source. Or any mana source, really. Alright, we're dead. Yeah, I'm fine with just backing this one up here. Yeah, Wasteland, right on time. So 
So we lost because our 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 opponent had force for vile and three wastes on the first three turns. Uh, that is an, an unreasonably good opener against what we were doing. All right, so we're playing against Shardless Bug. We'll probably want this one of Rest in Peace that I'm playing. And we'll probably want these cards. We could consider Path to Exile for Tarmogoyths, uh, but it's bad against most of the rest of the deck. So, what am I removing? Everything's kind of reasonable. I'll probably trim a wing mare or maybe two. Why Direfleet Daredevil? Because Bafra's testing it and I'm testing his build. I don't like Direfleet Daredevil, generally speaking. I, uh, I did a lot of testing with the card and my results were not particularly positive. Yeah, so I think we might pull the wing mares and then trim one other random card. No experience sideboarding with this build. This is the first time I've done this. But something approximating that's probably fine. Hey, thank you very much for subscribing. I appreciate your support. Dawn of thing a lot. Uh, well, this hand is super awkward. We're uh, not keeping this. And is much better. We'll keep this one. Oh, and Disgruntled Elf, thank you for your continued support. Oh, wait, you weren't a sub already? Or did you just, like, miss for a little while? Because I know I've been, like, chatting with you for, like, years on MTG Salvation. Alright, so I'll put that on top. That means that I can't fetch this turn to play around Wasteland, I have to play Mom. It does make me feel better, but I don't think I'm going to side out Shardless, or excuse me, uh, side out Spirit of the Labyrinth in the, like, Ancestral Visions, Baleful Strix, Jace the Mind Sculptor matchup, as much as I hate the card. This stream, if nothing else, should be entertaining, because I'm going to yell at how fucking bad Spirit of Labyrinth is all day. Alright, opponent, what you got for me? Probably just a Tarmogoyf, brick wall this spirit. Well, I guess good news for me.
now we'll watch Spirit win the game single-handedly as my opponent cascades into Ancestral Visions and cries. Also, let me just, like, throw out how much of a load of shit it is that my opponent has double basic when I have Recruiter to go get Moon Man. That's, uh, that's sadness. So, I can just jam the Hollowed Spirit Keeper here because it's annoying. Or I can recruit her for, like, Flicker Wisp and just start that whole song and dance and then save Hollowed Spirit Keeper as, a uh, like, slightly later game play where it gets me infinite, guys. I don't know, I kind of like saving the Recruiter until I have 5 lands, because then I can like deploy a 2-drop. I also don't like necessarily know what I need yet with Recruiter. So I'm going to go ahead and jam this. I also don't want my Hollowed Spirit Keeper to just like... eat it to either him to Turok or Liliana plus. <clears throat> Man, it's a goddamn shame that we don't have uh, a Phyrexian Revoker in my deck to go get. Hey, Spirit of the Labyrinth, where are you now that my opponent has Jason Brainstorm? You're dead. Because you're garbage. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a Saturday, so I can, like, reasonably do a middle-of-the-day stream for each. Spirit of Labyrinth, where are you now? Still not helping me win this game. Uh, we're playing Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Alright, fine. I think I need my land more than my opponent because I'm going to want to go like 3 drop, 2 drop in one turn at some point. And they just drew three cards and get to Jace Brainstorm forever now. So... I don't think I can afford to Wasteland. Oh great. Now opponent has seven cards and a Jace and two Shardless Agents. Everything's fine. I wish I had Phyrexian Revokers and Baron Crusaders and friends. Yeah, I'm having lots of fun. I regret this stream. No idea what I'm getting. I 
If I get Spirit of Labyrinth to shut off Brainstorm, then my opponent either just kills it, or just goes into, like, Fate Seal Me mode, and I still die. I guess I can get another Hollowed Spirit Keeper. I suppose that's my best option. It's okay. My, my opponent will probably just hit me and hit it. <laughs> oh yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely dead. Uh, but Tyler, I don't have a, uh, a Marin Crusader in this list. I can't hit him back. I don't have four lands to do that. So I think long term, my plan is have my opponent cast a Maelstrom Pulse on some of my stuff and use a Maelstrom Pulse to blow up their Jace. And then draw another Dire Fleet Daredevil and use Toxic Deluge to wipe their board somehow before I die or before they play a Tarkadwife. Never mind. All right, we'll play a couple more terms just just to confirm that my opponent isn't an idiot and they can realize uh, that they just bounce Hollowed Spirit Keeper and bash in. All right, they've uh, they've realized it. We're just uh, gonna do one of these here. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so game one loss, play there. Game two, loss. It's my first loss to Shardless Bug in, like, eons. It's embarrassing. Alright, so game two, loss to unchecked Jace. Alright, back in we go. Yeah, that, that match was disappointing. Alright. This hand, like, does nothing, but it has an Aether Vial, and we have 33 creatures in this build. What the fuck? Alright! This is a modern deck. What are you doing? You have Badlands in your deck, so you made this choice intentionally. God damn it. We're gonna lose to this fucking shit pile of a deck, because I don't have swords to plowshares. Uh. <coughs> Man, fuck me. Now you get to, like, sack the blood gas to that Cabal Therapy. Then fetch. Mm. You know what would be good here? Brenton Forest Tender. Oh shit, and the Phoenix comes back too? Because it's all big? Alright. Opponent missed the, like, absolutely free Cabal Therapy, though. 
So there's that. You know it would be good? Literally all the cards we took out of the deck to play gems, like, I don't know, Spirit of the Labyrinth. My opponent plays a Faithless Looting. They still discard two cards, and so their uh, Flame Blade Idiot still gets big. What the fuck? Main deck Firestorm? <laughs> 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 How do I win, chat? God, opponent, just like fucking therapy me with your like free like landfall blood gas shenanigans. All right, I guess I just take six so that I can have an active mom. Fetch stings and probably matters. So getting in playing Thalia is an okay line, but um, I think I just want to have multiple bodies that can just start trading with things now. And keeping the recruiters is going to give me more options, because I think I'm going to last a couple of turns. Ah, that little bastard has menace too. That's great. So I kind of want to take the the adept off the table because it can potentially let the phoenix come back. So my next turn I like Recruiter for Flicker Wisp, and then I have two bodies covered. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to take the Menace card off the table now. So long term, I'm going to want to get a Thalia Heretic Cathar because it'll stop like the Flame Wake Phoenix and Blood Ghasts from uh, like just getting in there with haste damage. Yeah, we don't need any more lands this game though. There's a lot of daredevil opportunities. So that'll stop both the Phoenix and the Bloodgast from attacking this turn.
sure. It's super unfortunate fortunate that that name is Flicker Wisp and we have two. Yeah, Tyler, it, it's really simple. Just message me on Facebook. How is this bad? We're doing fine. I guess I just dump this into play now. We don't even have to play around Firestorm. We've got a Selfless Spirit to protect from Firestorm. Of all the spirits in this deck, Selfless Spirit is playable. Yeah, that 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 that's correct. This is uh Basically a deck full of flex slots instead of reasonable main deck cards. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it does. It looks like we're going to manage to cobble together a win for this one. Somehow. Don't know that my opponent is supposed to play that land. I think they're just supposed to hold it for their faithless looting. <coughs> So I can bash in for just 5 right now, put my opponent to 7, and then present lethal on the next swing. Or I can also use 1 mom to give a Thalia protection and, like, bash in. But that should work next turn, too. So I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to, like, leave back another blocker or two more than I think I need. Oh, Firestorm can deal damage to players. Well, we won't beat that then. I legit did not know that Firestorm could deal damage to players. I've never seen it target a player before. <laughs> because, you know, everyone just kills my creatures with it. Alright, we did it. What do I even call this deck for my notes? I don't know. What do they call this deck in modern chat? They call it hollow one. All right. Surgical seems great. Rest in peace seems great. Council's judgment and path seem great. These cards are considerable. What is bad?
So, Spirit of the Labyrinth is simultaneously good and terrifying. Because if they cast one of those, like, cathartic reunion type cards, they might just, like, get rid of my hand. So that's something to keep in mind. I'll probably trim Dire Fleet Daredevil. A lot of what they have to flash back, I don't care about. Uh, I have no idea how to sideboard. I cut the Magus. I don't think I'm gonna like realistically take them off of mana. Containment Priest and the Phoenix. Eh, we'll run something like this. I don't know exactly. So this hand has reasonable cards in the matchup, and we kind of have to hope that's enough. I don't want to mulligan too aggressively here, because my opponent might have one of the cards that makes us both draw and discard, and when that happens, my hand could change a lot, so something that has a reasonable mix of spells and lands that do something is, is fine here. Oh, D-Hop, thank you very much for hosting. Uh, it's uh, interesting right now. Uh, we're playing against essentially a legacy port of the Red Black Hollow One deck from Modern. We got game one, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh, do I own Black Lotus? No, I don't. My roommate has one or two. Alright, you've made a 4-4 with your hand. Congratulations, sir. Uh, the stream is... The, the stream is a stream. That's, uh... That's about all I can say right now. Uh, we lost our first round, super depressingly, uh, to Shardless Bug. We're, we're playing Bafra's very experimental build uh, that has no Stoneforge Mystics and no Swords to Plowshares. Alright, opponent has now dealt themselves 7 damage. If we play a 2-1, we might uh, actually win the race against Hollow One if they just kept attacking. Not that they would, but, you know. Theoretically. Oh, there's a Taiga in there, too. Oh, I guess that's for the flashback of their ancient grudge. Yeah, e experimental is not a synonym for bad. Uh, it's it's a weird it's a weird deck list. Alright, so we're probably just getting clocked by all these idiots. See, this is, this is why I was fucking afraid of, like, playing Spirit, but chat's like, oh, this is the best card in your deck. Now I just, like, lose half my fucking hand to the Spirit of the Labyrinth. This card is garbage.
So we take out the Hollowed One here, and then we have the Flame Winged Phoenix on lockdown with our Sarah Avenger, and we can pack our opponent to death. That's almost a good draw, if I could cast you, Spirit of the Labyrinth. But I can't. Hate, 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 hate. March 24th, 2018. Phil calls Spirit of the Labyrinth an almost good draw. Alright, this isn't big, right? No, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Well, I'm blocking. If you have a card that gets rid of my Sarah Avenger, like, good on you. Nope, just, uh, just an idiot check. I respect it. Alright. We, we have won the match versus Black Red Hollow 1 chat. We've done it with our amazing deck list. I'm going to leave this deck list up here for a second and let some of you just soak in uh, its nature. Alright, so... Game to stabilize the board and win. I'm going to take 30 seconds to refill my water bottle. If you have any questions about this deck list, feel free to throw them in the chat and I will answer them momentarily.
All right. So what's good about this deck? Okay, that's a real question. I, I don't understand why someone would play this over the regular white version. Or let's just add the regular red-white version to that as well. Um, Vahra has a post about it on the source. This is his deck list with just a couple of changes that I made. The idea is that you're trying to mitigate some of the tempo loss associated with Stoneforge Mystic. Since people are playing more answers to artifacts and more cheap removal, a lot of times you might invest like six mana into trying to get like a sort of fire and ice off of Stoneforge, put it in and equip it. Um, this version is much more aggressive and has more lock pieces at the cost of a lot of the mid-range game. So there's there's like no no main deck like real removal. There's no main deck way to like really grind through people like you usually do with equipment. You're just left with like the whole like flicker wisp my recruiters plan, or to a lesser extent flicker wisp directly dare daredevil. Uh, let me see if there are any other questions I missed. Alright, so that's the gist of it. So for anyone who's new to the stream because of the host, hi, my name's Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University. Uh, we're currently 1-1, playing a very, very, very experimental Death and Taxes build uh, designed by Bahra. Um, if you end up enjoying this content, or, you know, me yelling at Spirit of the Labyrinth for being terrible, uh, feel free to follow. Um, I am not playing this deck because I necessarily think that it's good. I am playing it because I appreciate the direction of exploration and I want to get some matches in to see like which aspects of this exploration are good and which aspects are bad. Looks like we might have to wait until we get repaired here. Do, 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 do. This hand is awesome. So we have six good cards and then Spirit of Labyrinth. We'll see how it does this time. Hopefully my opponent is playing like an infinite cantrip deck. Hi, new guy here. How is Daredevil working out? It is decisively awkward. Uh, I have a, a whole article on it that I will link to you momentarily here as soon as I have six through this turn. Uh, long story short, Direfully Daredevil has really, really high upside, but relatively low average power. The uh, long version is here that includes a lot of playtesting data. This is a spot where I am just going to port my opponent. I know that they have one land and they shuffled with Ponder. More or less whatever deck they're on, you know, this potentially takes them off of their entire play for turn.
Alright, we have the setup for the Spirit of the Labyrinth blowout now. If Spirit is going to be good, this is its moment, where my opponent just goes and casts Brainstorm right here. Nope. Scumbag Spirit. Doing nothing. Lotus Petal. LED. A dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Duress. Now I can F6 and make sure my opponent can cast their cards correctly. Yeah, we are we are just dead. opponent essentially had the perfects after mulliganing in order to not have to cantrip again and play around with shopping for it. It's a little frustrating. They also needed to go off that turn, or we, like, wing bear, and then the game's over. Scumbag, Spirit of Labyrinth, still just being unplayable. Alright. So, we'll Surgical, we'll Mind Break Trap, we'll Rest in Peace, we'll Recruiter, we'll Relic Warder, We'll consider Pontiff as an answer to goblins. What's bad? This isn't really a Flicker Wisp matchup. We'll cut some number of those. This probably isn't the greatest Selfless Spirit matchup. My opponent could have Abrupt Decay or Fatal Push, so I guess we keep it around. Darefully Daredevil's better than it looks. Probably a Heretic Cathar is not the three drop that I want to be playing. I can probably trim those. Hollowed Spirit Keeper isn't at its best here. Like the, the opponent still plays 12 cantrips, give or take. So, like, the spirit's fine. Bill, how long are you streaming today? Uh, until I need to eat lunch, probably. The Magus might be overly ambitious. Oh, that is 60, though. Yeah, sure, Tyler, that's fine. Uh, so this hand has a surgical, but that's probably not enough to just win. I'd rather have just about any hand that has, like, 
a two drop creature rather than like a surgical do nothing hand. So I'm gonna mulligan. Yeah, this hand is infinitely better. So I'll keep this one. It's awkward. So I do want another land. But I really want to play the mom on turn one, so I guess it doesn't matter. Like a Pontiff more than a Magus? Yeah, that's, that's potentially correct. My opponent is pretty prone to playing around Wasteland anyway, by fetching like Island and Swamp as their first two lands, so Magus isn't great. I really want Pontiff more on the the draw now than on the play. Just because my if my opponent brings in the the empty the Warrens, which they, you know they probably will, um, it's much safer to empty on the play than the draw. Just like mathematically speaking. Yeah, that's fine. We can lose to Massacre. We can lose to Dread of Night. Like, that's nothing new. Yep. Yep, Scumbag Spirit of the Labyrinth dies to Dread of Night. You know what wouldn't? Phyrexian Revoker, which I'd normally have in that slot. It's okay. Hopefully my opponent just, like, kills us this turn so I don't have to, like, sit here and try to commentate over a Dread of Night game. What are we experimenting on today? We're playing Bafra's build which has no Stoneforge Mystics and no Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, for any, anyone new to the stream who hasn't watched me stream before today, I hate Spirit of the Labyrinth. I think it's... Oh, thank God, the opponent's just going off. We'll die. And then we can move on and play a different deck. I also don't like this version without Swords to Plowshares and Stoneforge Mystic, but I'm not going to ignore potentially good testing of an interesting deck list, you know? Bahra is not a nobody, you know, he is on the, like, short list of D&T players whose, whose opinion I value very, very, very highly. Alright, so we've just got, like, Cabal Rit here into Tudor into Lethal. Yep. So 
So a lot of the Delver decks that you want to sideboard in removal against don't have the basics anyway, so it's just a free roll, and then you avoid doing things like giving 5 life off Dermag Angler. Alright, so we lost a Dread of Night there. Alright, once more into the abyss with this depressing deck list. The deck list is below the stream. I don't know why the bot didn't uh, spit back its usual command there. So, like, there, there are pros and cons to this deck list. We've uh, mostly come across all of the cons so far. Like, Spirit of the Labyrinth is underwhelming. You don't have removal in game one, unless your opponent has removal and you get to Dire Fleet it back. You don't have the equipment package to dig you out of bad situations and gain you life. We'll keep this hand. Uh, it's kind of average, you know. Does doesn't have an ether vial start. Doesn't have like a mom. But in in this build, since you like you're down for one drops because you don't have swords to plowshares, so you can't just keep hands expecting to have like one drops all the time. That's just not realistic with this build. Our opponent's 0 4. Cool. Maybe that means my opponent's playing a bad deck. But it looks like my opponent is going to get all of their cantrips out of their hand before the Spirit of the Labyrinth comes down, so. It continues to overperform. I'm not gonna ask for this scoop. Like, my opponent is playing magic because they want to play magic. And there's very few things that annoy me, annoy me more in a real life event than people going like, hey, will you concede to me? No. No, I won't. Tyler, if Minifer doesn't watch your stream anymore, maybe it's because you keep streaming drafts instead of Legacy. Although, admittedly, I missed your Aloran stream, so. Bleh. Did you play anything interesting in your Aloran build? Because I know there's a lot of neat ways to build that right now. <laughs> No force of will. Okay. It's kind of interesting. I, I suppose force isn't the most necessary card in the current format. It's relatively fair.
We're going to have an interesting time boarding if my opponent just concedes here. How do you know he's on Storm? How do you know he's not on, like, a Grixis Pyromancer deck? Oh, Admin Morgan, thank you very much for, uh, for joining. I assume it's Admin, ADM. Or maybe it's Adam, and you're not an Admin at all. Or an admiral. Unclear. Grixis Pyromancer is only Grixis Delver on the source. Like... Grixis Pyromancer just means like a Grixis deck featuring young Pyromancer, and I use that to refer to like the the Grixis control deck that is basically Delver without Delvers. I, I think it is ridiculous to say that my opponent is on Storm 100% sure. I think that is very silly. I think it is very likely that they're on Storm, and I'm probably going to board for Storm, uh, but there's, there's a very good chance that I'm just wrong. I'm going to board for Ant, and maybe be bringing in some bricks. I might sideboard a little differently than last time, though. Hey, would someone give Hurricane Shand, like, a 60-second timeout or something like that? Positive feedback is good. Don't call people idiots. So, I think I'm going to board this way and bring in the council's judgments just to hedge against me being wrong and to answer dread of night i'm also not going to bring in the relic order because if i'm wrong it's just like dead yeah that was that was maybe a little bit overboard but whatever Oh, he's just timed out for 10 minutes, right?
or did you time him out for 600 seconds, like, four different times? <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. That was more than intended. Oops. Oof. Disgruntled elk with the pun comeback. Nice. Hey, if the chat wants to just talk about animals, that's fine. You know, whatever whatever floats your boat. <laughs> oh man, is the moose fax bot command not working? Oh man. Come on, MTG bot, get get on top of your shit there. The pinnacle of animals, sheep? I don't know if I'd go that far. How about turtles, man? They get to carry their house with them? That seems like a pretty sweet perk. I'm gonna lead on Caracas here to play around a potential massacre for however long I can slash want to. We need more goat tokens? So you're telling me that I need to play trading post. Is that it? Hear you loud and clear, chat. Trading post is playable in D&T, right? Uh, yeah. Totally. You, uh, you make goat tokens that you can equip your sword of fire and ice with. Opponent has to just deal with that forever. Caribou ranger spring jack pasture. <laughs> so I, I really love Trading Post as a card. Uh, this is a discussion that has never happened on stream before, but like I've played Trading Post in multiple formats. Uh, in, I've, I've played it in Standard uh, as like a way to stabilize in a, in a blue-white control deck and like take over the game. Um, I had a really weird mono black deck that utilized it as essentially a pseudo win condition and just played like a bunch of board wipes and trading post herp a derp that deck was fun all right so you have a lotus petal you're actually going off here or are you just scaring me Yes, yes. So our opponent is on Tess. What was the most broken D&T moment on stream? That's a tricky one. Uh, one of the better ones from recently was when I put Batter Skull and I think Sword of Fire and Ice on Mirren Crusader, and then used Rashadenport to tap down a Maze of Ith and swung in for 20 damage in one hit. I don't know if that's like best of all time moment, but that was pretty great. Uh, 
Uh, in this game, no. We're, we're just stone cold dead to it. Because the pontiffs are still on this sideboard, because I didn't bring them in just, like, hedging that we might not know what deck my opponent is on. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and concede after I take a draw. Pretend like I have Stoneforge Mystic in my deck as an out. Uh, I'll think for a minute. Uh, is it going to work out? It's not going to work out. Alright, so now we know that my opponent is on tests. So we'll bring in the Relic Order and we'll bring in the Pontiffs. Uh, these Surgicals aren't going to do much. We can just keep those out. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, Lewis CBR values his time and values his trophy count more than anything else. So he will concede games very, very quickly, and he will drop from events very, very quickly. And if we're playing against Tess, we probably don't need those council's judgments, and I can just like play one other random idiot instead. I suppose Athalia Heretic Cathar is some de degree of disruption. Yeah, I like Lewis CBR. He, he streams from time to time. A very good opponent. I enjoy playing against him a lot. Uh, this one's tricky. It has a Vile and Ports to deny mana. It has a Spirit of the Labyrinth. And it has a Fetch Land that can get me my Scrub Land for Pontiff doesn't have a Thalia, though, and I'd really like to Thalia on the play, but how aggressively do I want to mulligan? I guess I do have, like, a Mind Break Trap to, to get to if I just mulligan this. Yeah, so, yeah. So I, I agree. Spirit is considerably less good against Tess than Ant. Since we're in a 33 creature build, I probably need to keep most Aether Vial hands. So, like, it, it has some things going for it. Like, I have Direfleet Daredevil as a potential turn 2 play if my opponent Gataxian probes. I have Direfleet Daredevil as a turn 3 play if my opponent plays, a, like, a discard spell. Uh, I can just use Direfleet Daredevil to snipe something out of, gra out of a graveyard if that matters. I can play Spirit to prevent, like, future cantrips from working on turn 2. Um... It's, it's not a good hand. It's... On, on, on my rating scale, like, this is, like, the, the exact definition of a 3, right? Where, like, this card 
this hand could win or lose the game depending on how things go. All right, so they take the Spirit of the Labyrinth. Spirit of the Labyrinth, once again, does borderline nothing. And now I'll have to decide whether or not I want to, like, direfully Daredevil and Gataxian Probe to draw a card, or whether or not I want to just, uh, port my opponent. I just want to port my opponent, because now I have, like, next turn, uh, Recruiter into Thalia. So chat, something to start thinking about. When I Cabal Therapy my opponent, what do I name? Taiga. Interesting. I don't think I'm going to make the choice yet. I think I'm just going to uh, port them here and put an Avenger. Try to gain a little bit more information before I Dire Fleet. I'd much rather have a fourth land when I Dire Fleet. Or we can just not Dire Fleet, you know, and do this. And now, 
my opponent is dead on board if they fetch, and if they don't kill me this turn or massacre or equivalent, I just like put in direfully daredevil and have lethal. All right, and we win that one. We are now going the excellent two-two going into the last round here. I think that keep was legitimately tricky. Give me a second to update my spreadsheet here. Three, we have multiple hate bearers. Uh, all right, so let's see if we can break even with this build. Yeah, the uh, the opponent did it did end up zero five there. That uh that that feels bad. So so cyan, it kind of like depends on what you're doing. If you're playing moto for playtesting and you're not good and you don't have, like, a whole bunch of tickets built up, then, like, playing out all your rounds makes sense, right? And if our opponent is going 0-5, then that might mean they need the experience. They need the playtesting more than they need, like, just valuing their time more. Ugh, this hand's rough. So we have no no one drops or two drops. We have a wasteland as disruption and a magus of the moon. But we're on the play and we can't really take advantage of that at all. My opponent is any sort of combo deck. I just fold to it. Mulligan. Put that on top, but it doesn't matter. Oh, don't be elves. Don't be elves. Fuck. All right. The good news is that I have Thalia Heretikathar, which will be really, really good if I spike another land. Chat, this is on you. It's your fault I got paired against elves. It's in the chat rules. I'm not supposed to get paired against elves. Uh, it's fine. If we're going to beat elves, it is with a DNT build like this that has four spirits, Thalia Hereticathars, and a bunch of Orzhov Pontiffs. Like, if we're gonna do it, this is the time. I wish I had some flash idiot to punish this attack. I'll block. Uh, yeah, see, Seattle's real far for me. You know, that would require a plane ticket, and I'm not quite committed enough that I want to do that. Well, opponent has one land, so there's hope.
But that probably means opponent just is real close to just going off and just needs, like, one land if they kept this, like, one lander with no mana dork. Like, like maybe they have, like... No, if they had Heritage Druid, they would have just played out another elf. So they probably don't have Heritage Druid. Hmm... There is no hop versus elves? I don't know that we have a lot of hop versus anything. I'm not playing, like, Elspeth, so I can't hop things. Alright, opponent has the, uh, the best combo in their deck, Elvish Visionary and uh, Wirewood Symbiote. As Julian puts it, you get to Demonic Tutor for a random card in your deck every turn. Alright, come on. Give me a land. Give me a land. Fuck. Well, chat, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this wasteland, and we're gonna point it at this here bayou, and we're gonna pray that they don't draw yet another land to do things that matter. Or a heritage druid. Or fucking anything. Uh, but I feel like if I don't disrupt them and I just, like, let them go, I have zero chance of winning. You know, right now we're working at, like, 10% chance to win. Gotta keep those numbers up. Yes, that is the plan. Our plan is hope that opponent draws badly. Shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna F6. And, uh... I'll un-F6 when my opponent goes to attacks. I assume I'm just, like, Stone Cold dead. My opponent's hand would have to be, like, real bad for me to not be dead. Or at least effectively dead. Yeah, yeah, it, it is possible that they were playing around Wasteland. Let, let's just ignore the fact that we don't have Jitte in this deck. Let's just focus on the fact that we have a lot of good cards in our deck for the matchup, like Thalia Heretic Athar and Orzhov Pontiff. There's also Spirit of the Labyrinth, which has, you know, yet to prove itself as a magic card today. But... You know, we'll see. So we didn't, like, play against any of the decks that Bahra's build would be good against. Which is super unfortunate and not, like, the best round of testing for that. You know, we had a really weird sequence of pairings with, like, Bug, Red Black, Hollow One, Ant, Tess, Elves. Alright. Opponent green sunning again. Probably getting another Nettle Sentinel unless they're just like out of cards they can cast. Yeah. I mean, in comparison to regular DNT that has like a shit ton of rest in pieces and mirroring crusaders. It's just, like, got to be worse, right? Uh, Sezato? Um, I have my, my website, Thraven University. The deck lists tab has a ton of stock deck lists for you, as well as some experimental deck lists. Um, I think I have a, like... Mono White Crusader build, and then a Mono White Mixed Sarah Avenger and Crusader build.
here is the link to that. Can I concede because I'm bored? Kind of want to concede because I'm bored. Alright, uh, now I can concede because I'm dead. Yes, it, it is relatively current. Alright, so we're playing against elves. We were on the play. And we lost to uh, Dan Tony. Or Dantony. Game one, loss to Glimpse Chain. All right. Pontiff in. Containment Priest in. Recruiter in. We'll consider Council's Judgment because people have been playing Progenitus again. And we probably begrudgingly need to play Path to Exile because we have no swords to plowshares. So that's not good for us. All right. What's bad? Hild Spirit Keeper doesn't seem great. Uh, I don't think us natural ordering or glimpse of naturing is going to be particularly good. We'll cut those idiots. Hallowed Spirit guy out of the deck. Yeah, didn't I already cut that? Yeah, I already cut that. Um, I usually trim some number of Thalias. I'll probably do that as well. It's just unfortunate that if I like go and cut three of them, I don't have a lot of like bulk left in the deck. Uh, I want to keep Selfless Spirit to protect from Abrupt Decay, and it's also just an aggressive flyer that can poke. That matters. It's possible that I should do like a mix of Thalia versus Ren Wingmare for cuts. Again, I don't have a ton of early interaction. I also don't have Revoker to go and uh, deal with. The Wirewood Symbiote BS. These Pontiffs need to do a, a lot of a lot of heavy lifting, boys. Well, this hand has a Pontiff, so we're gonna keep it. And hope that we draw a fetch land to cast it. This is not a good hand, though. But I'm not going to discard like throw back any hand that has a Pontiff when it might be our only chance of winning. We also have so many creatures that, like, we're just going to draw creatures to play, so I'm not, like, too worried about it. Whew. Off the top. Now we just port, hope to like snag a cradle with wasteland. Hope my opponent kept like a triple or quadruple glimpse hand. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say spirit was a good draw. Quiet basic planes. Look, I'm gonna die easily to a lot of things. This is this is my worst matchup. Like, of all of the like common decks, this is this is the worst one.
yeah, we are we are playing 3-1 get there. That is the game plan. We might follow it up with another 3-1 get there. Try it, however you say. Alright. lands, generally speaking. I don't know, with this build you have like the Dire Fleet Daredevils to go and exile the Loams in, and Punishing Fires in game one. That's something that definitely matters. Lands is, is probably even-ish for red-white to maybe slightly favorable and probably slightly unfavorable for mono-white. I'd have to like look at my data to double check. I'm glad you enjoyed my content. We'll get to that black source eventually. The site's been a labor of love for quite some time. Uh, very, very happy with where it's going. There's a, a coming soon tab that tells you the, the sorts of things that I've been uh, working on recently. If you're you're curious. Yeah, it's it's pretty much entirely legacy and almost entirely DNT. I do occasionally write on something other than D&T, mostly when I get bored and I decide I want to play something else. It's fine, like, they get one turn of Cradle, right? And it doesn't appear like they can just kill me. That's uh, not annoying at all, actually. Never mind. Alright, so opponent just has a bunch of idiots. Orzov Pontiff. Summon Black Source, please. Ugh. Well, let's get rid of that guy's cradle.
And this is probably the point where I have to start holding down the fort. They have a lot of guys, and I am not the aggressor anymore. I'm definitely on the defensive now. I don't believe in the heart of the cards. It's 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 hard to like really feel the heart of the cards when you're paired against elves. Like, you know, the the oomph just isn't there. Did you just like draw a crater hoof or something and you're trying to figure out if you can cast it? What's going on? It's just a Nissa? Green sun for x equals 3. Okay. Why is this better than saving it for x equals 8 a few turns down the line? Rex Sage, Target Spirit of the Labyrinth. Oh, I see, I see the plan. No, their, their plan is to, like, bounce it a bunch of times and recast it. So this turn they can probably get rid of the other spirit. And then the next turn they can get rid of the other other spirit, and then just start drawing cards with Elvish Visionary again. Really need to draw that land for Pontiff, like, now. Well, that's a castable card, so I guess there's that. But that's a little late to the party at this stage. Whew. How's the build? Probably unplayable. We're we're about to two three. All right, that is a that is a creature that can start attacking. I guess technically I could swing in now. No, I don't want to swing in with any of the rest of these. I I just like cannot afford to tap the mom and give up spirit. 
and my opponent would probably be fine with throwing away multiple bodies to get rid of like Athalia, Heretic, Cathar. They might just take two if I swung in with Athalia. Otherwise, they just like like play like block and bounce with one of their bouncers. So. Yeah, yeah, see Tyler, that's why I usually don't play Legacy for Hundos, because like, people know what I'm on and I get metagamed against super hard. It's like showing up for the games at the shop in town. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, finally. Uh, Cannon Fairy, I am still waiting on Card Hoarder to get my bot finished so that I can borrow cards from them. Uh, I'm gonna give them a couple more days before I email back. Uh, the last email from them said, Hey, we want to send you some stuff. What's your address? Uh, I expect to be hearing back from them about the bot any, any day now. Oh, I had to put this on the stack. Let's shrinky dink. Uh, so Pontiff is a modal card that can either give my creatures plus one, plus one, or my opponent's creatures negative one, negative one. So I just got the, the four for one. They bounced a couple of their creatures, returning them back to their hand. Dryad Arbor. Uh, don't I just wasteland that? I think I just wasteland that. Don't know why you fetched that. Do you just have like a, a random cradle in hand or like... Maybe you need that if you have any chances of going off and you just have to like think I won't do it. But I'll do it. I'll take the bait. I have Flicker Wisp to, for Pontiff again. Bait, bait taken. Yeah, then, then there's the haunt mode that doesn't happen. Yes, that is that is correct. The haunt mode basically says when when it dies, it becomes a spooky ghost and it haunts a card. And then if the card it haunts dies, you get to do its effect again. Uh, I don't I don't like this build so far. Um, but we haven't played against a lot of the builds, a lot of the decks that this build would be good against. To be fair. Alright, so we have three, four, five, six, seven crashing in this turn. That's all fine. Then we can kill on the next turn. I don't want to attack with the spirit. Like, my, my opponent can return a forest, untap any one of these idiots.
well, three drop Thalia is is doing work here. Uh, more generally, in the past, I have not overly been a fan of the card. Uh, it comes down a little too slow when you don't have a way to accelerate into it. Orzov haunted. All right, so we got a match. Or er, we got a game against elves, I should say. So we kept a slow hand that had a pontiff, and it, it worked out. Drawing the drawing the spirit was definitely acceptable there. I will I will say spirit did did some work that game. It kept us from just dying to like wirewood symbiote drowning. Alright, so we're in play for that one and we win. Going on the draw for the next one, and things will be much, much more difficult. Um uh... I still think we just let our opponent get us if they have the Progenitus. This card's so, so, so bad in the matchup, more generally speaking. It's really slow and, like, borderline unplayable when I have, like, Thalia and Wingmares in the deck. Not that, like, Flicker Wisp is necessarily the best or anything like that, but Flicker Wisping Pontiff was super relevant. Magus shuts off Cradle. That matters. Alright, so this is a Vile Hand. Vile Hands are good, but it's a Vile Hand that doesn't have any relevant cards in the matchup other than Ethan Vile. We'll ship this. Oh, this one's bad. Assuming we, we draw lands. Assuming we can scry a white source. This gets to go mom into spirit. Assuming we draw two lands, we get recruiter for pontiff. I'll go to the bottom. <sighs> All right. We'll lose this one. That's fine. We're gonna lose it anyway. Uh, I, I, I think our chances of winning on five are abysmal, so I think a risky six-card hand is a fine choice for a keep. Maybe we're not 100% dead. Now let's just draw, like, natural scrubland. Recruiter for Pontiff. Have my opponent play out some more 1-1s. One Jeez, Natural Rex Sage is a beating. I, 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 I disagree. I think we had to keep that hand. I don't know, like, what combination of cards on five is better than a potential, like, Mom and Spirit of the Labyrinth hand that also has Recruiters? If the card we need to draw is land, and we have 22 of them remaining in the decks, that's a lot of hits. Like, we're, we're better than a third to hit land. Now, granted, it really needs to be a white source, but, like, that's still probably fine, right? So, rather than 22, we have, what, like, 17 hits? So, 
still about a third. We're a third to hit on white. And with the scry, it's better than that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Vile would be pretty good. Like, in order for a 5 to be better, it really needs to be a vile based hand. Yeah, we're, uh... We're either literally or figuratively dead here. I'm just trying to figure out which one it is. Yeah, Vile would have been bad against the Rex Age, but, like, they they had to have that Rex Age in order to deal with the, the Spirit, otherwise their double glimpse hand was garbage. So, like, we were probably fine on the risk reward spec there. Yeah, it's it's game three. Yeah, at this point we're we're probably literally dead. I don't think I care enough to like watch my opponent glimpse chain. Um, actually, maybe they time out. Yeah. So my out is my opponent timing out. Okay, that's that's reasonable. Just, just cast a finisher so I can concede, please. I mean, if you're expecting to play against a whole bunch of Stompy decks, like, don't play a splash build, just play regular mono white. To be completely honest, and I certainly wouldn't, like, splash a third color. Alright, so loss. So, game three... Mull to six and keep weak six. Opponent has Rex Sage for Spirit and Double Glimpse. Alright, so let's adjust that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put the deck list back up here. I, I'm going to stream a little bit more with this build, just for the sake of testing, but I'm going to run to the restroom real quick before I do so. If you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to throw it in the chat. Hey, can we cut Hollowed Spirit Keeper for, like, anything else? Like, of the cards in this deck list, I actually like Hollowed Spirit Keeper the best. Um, like, I think that is a reasonable inclusion. Um, I'm gonna run back the same 75. I don't really like this, but we played against a lot of fringe matchups, and I don't want that to be the reason why I have a poor impression of this. So I'll, I'll run this through one more league. I'm going to go ahead and take 30 seconds here to just blink the stream in and out, uh, just to split this up into two videos for my YouTube followers. So I am not going anywhere, I am not ceasing streaming. <laughs> 